So this year, I've received more than 50 million views on Instagram Reels alone. That doesn't include any other platforms like TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And if it did, that number would be somewhere in the hundreds of millions of views. Now, none of this was luck. I've had and still have so many videos that don't perform very well at all. Even though I've built a community of over a million followers on Instagram, that doesn't mean I get a free pass. In this new For You page era of consuming content that we're in right now, each video is becoming more and more independent. Meaning that even if a larger creator like myself posts a video that people don't quite interact with, it's going to stun that video and it's not gonna show it to the rest of my followers. The point I'm trying to make here is that I'm not exempt from flopped videos or posts not performing the way I would like them to. I still struggle with this all the time and I still get nervous every single time I post a new video. With that said, I've learned a lot through my content creator journey and thought it would be a fun video to walk through my top 10 favorite tips for how to get better engagement on your Instagram reels. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in with number one. Get straight to the point. If you have to explain what your video is going to be about, then you have already lost the viewer's attention. With short form content and really any content right now for that matter, you don't have to have an intro, just jump right into the story. And there's a difference between having an intro clip or some intro footage and filming an intro that is explaining what your video is going to be about. For example, I would never start any one of my videos with, hey, I'm Kyle, the photographer, and here's what my video is going to be about. I have never announced once that I'm a photographer and videographer in one of my videos. That should be made perfectly clear within the first few seconds of my video. And if I'm not making that clear, then I'm probably doing something wrong. I don't have to say that, hey, I'm a videographer or I'm a photographer. It's pretty clear that if I'm traveling across the country or the world for a photo that I'm a photographer. I typically also start my videos off with some behind the scenes footage that features me with a camera in my hand to make it more clear of who I am and what my mission is. So don't waste your time telling people who you are and what you're about. Just show them and let your videos speak for themselves. Number two, stop posting 4K videos to Instagram Reels. Now, you know I'm passionate about this if I have it at number two, and that's because this is something that I really should have known and implemented into my workflow a long, long time ago, but unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way. I've posted hundreds of 4K videos to Instagram thinking that there was no difference. Instagram would just compress the video and it would be fine until one day I decided maybe I'll just try to post a video at 1080p. And to my surprise, that video looked so much better. Now I just know that I should have been doing that all along. Definitely learn from my mistakes. This is actually something that I've recently been doing in the last few months. So. If you're not familiar with compression, basically all of these apps compress your videos to a very small file size so they're able to be consumed and people are able to watch them without your videos lagging. So if you post a 4K video, that video has to be compressed a lot more than a regular 1080p video. So essentially by posting your video in 1080p, even if you filmed it on 4K, it's still going to look better because Instagram isn't compressing it as much. I also wanna quickly mention that this isn't going to be something that's going to affect the performance of your video. I've had so many videos posted in 4K that have performed insanely well, hundreds of videos that have got millions of views that were posted in 4K quality. But your videos are going to look much more crisp if you export them in 1080p versus 4K. Number three, use text overlays. Text overlays, for some reason, are so captivating to people. And I think most people, when they scroll onto a video that has text overlays, at least want to read what that text is saying. So the goal here is to get people invested Invested into your video before they finish reading what your text overlays say. And just like the first tip, using text overlays are a great way to skip the intro and just get right into the video. For example, most people who are watching this video have probably seen the POV trends online. POV, you did this or POV, you did that. One of the reasons why this trend works so well is because we're getting right into the action and we're eliminating that intro. Imagine if people started off their video vlogging instead of just using text overlays saying something like POV you started chasing your dreams and then played the video 
instead of just doing the text. I don't know about you, but I would have instantly swiped past that video. Plus using text also makes things feel a lot more natural, which brings me to my next point. Number four, be authentic and act natural. It's too easy to spot now on social media when someone is just acting for the camera and it usually comes off very inauthentic. Short form content is all about capturing raw, real, authentic moments. This is why 90% of vertical content is filmed with a phone. It doesn't feel so high production and it's more familiar to the viewer, which also makes it more relatable. Honestly, if there's one tip you can take from this video, it's be as authentic as you possibly can. If you're not being authentic, your videos are not going to perform well on any short form platform. This is one of those that works across the board on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels. And yeah, it's definitely the most important thing from this entire list. Now talking in front of the camera is not easy. It takes a lot of practice. So if you're someone who struggles with acting natural in front of a camera and want to take your short form content to the next level, definitely check out my online course in the description box below. The course is called Vertical Video Pro and it's specifically designed to help people create long-term success with short form content. Unlike this video where we're focusing on Instagram Reels, we break down each individual platform in this course and cover strategies that work for all of them. So if you're enjoying this video so far and feel like you're gaining a lot of value, I can almost guarantee that you'll be absolutely blown away by the course. Now is actually the perfect time to get the course too. We're doing a whole bunch of Black Friday sales up to $200 off. So I would definitely snag it up now because we probably won't have another sale like this until next Black Friday, to be honest. So again, definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description box below for you guys. And anyway, let's move on to number five. Use trending sounds. Instagram might be the last short form platform where using trending sounds will help the performance of your video. There's obviously still tons of trends on TikTok, but using trending audio specifically is becoming a lot less common. I mean, just think of how TikTok started. It was literally just trending sounds. And now that's pretty much non-existent, really. Luckily though, on Instagram, using trending sounds or trending audio is a great way of getting your videos out to more people. Now, a huge question I get asked a lot is, do you need to link the trending audio or the trending sound to your video when you're posting? And technically speaking, I guess it could help you if your video blows up and it's in the top of that sound and more people are going to that sound and they're seeing your video and watching all the top videos from that trending sound. But if your video is there in the first place, then it probably would was performing well on its own anyway. So to answer that question, no, it doesn't really matter. Sure, you might get a few more clicks here and there from people finding it, but I've never done it. I don't plan to do it in the future and your video will perform pretty much the same whether you link it or you don't. Number six, actually film your content vertically. I cannot stress this enough, unless you are a podcast or it makes perfect sense for you to punch in your horizontal videos vertically, chances are you should be filming everything vertically. I actually will reshoot things twice if I'm filming a YouTube video and an Instagram reel or TikTok at the same time, just so I have raw vertical content. Plus typically, like we were talking about earlier with filming on your phone, we want it to be filmed on a phone any chance we can get. It just makes it feel more authentic. So whether you're reshooting things twice like me or just filming everything vertically to begin with, it's always going to make the most sense. Number seven, stop chasing views and start providing value. Now this is the one that no one wants to hear because it's the truth and it's the hard route. But the truth is most people care more about getting followers, likes, and views than they do about creating great videos. I'm telling you, if you just take a few steps back and really think to yourself, why would people want to watch my videos? You're going to be so much better off because you're thinking about the viewer instead of yourself. Why would someone want to watch my video? Would I want to watch the video that I'm posting right now? Why do I want to gain more followers? What is that going to accomplish in my life? Those are all great questions that you should really think about before even starting to make content. I think there's just so much pressure in our society for everyone to just post content, but just know it's okay to take a step back and make a plan for yourself and just analyze what kind of content you want to make and why you want to make that content. Trust me, you don't have to rush. Which brings me to number eight. Number eight, quantity is not king. Now, of course, there is plenty exceptions to this, but overall, one really good video is worth 100 halfway decent videos. Now, if you're someone who's just beginning and you're trying to find your style, then be my guest. Go 
post as much as you want and just try to figure that out because finding your style and getting into the groove of things can take a long time. So in regards to that, I would say yes, maybe quantity is good for you so you can figure out which content you want to create. But if you're someone who already knows what kind of content you want to create, then quality will always win. I also think by taking your time to make each video better, you're increasing your odds of each video's potential to go viral. We're almost to the finish line now. Number nine, stay consistent. Now this one is a little obvious, but I think it's important to stay active and be consistent if you want to build a community. Posting three times in a week and then not posting for the rest of the month is going to stall your growth. It's much more important to stay consistent than it is to post as many videos as you can because most most of those times we get burnt out because we're not used to making that many videos. So set realistic goals for yourself that you think you can actually achieve and actually stay consistent with. For example, for me, I only post once a week. That's all I require myself to do. And that's because a lot of my videos take a week to plan out, film, edit, script. So it's not realistic for me to post twice a week, three times a week. It's just not going to happen. Most of my videos take way too long to make to be able to post that often, but that's okay. And like I just said, it's always better to have a consistent schedule, whether that's one video a week, two videos a week, maybe three or four videos a week, however many videos you can realistically make in a week. Don't try to push yourself too far because chances are you might just burn yourself out. Finally, number 10, stories are overrated. Now this one might be a little controversial, that's why I kept it for last, but so many people spend so much time posting stories and curating the most picture perfect stories when in reality that doesn't help you too much, especially if you're trying to grow. Now can stories be a great way for you to connect with your audience more? Absolutely. Are they going to be the reason why your audience follows you? Probably not. Maybe for a select few, but for most people, we spend way too much time on posting stories than we do making good videos. So I'm not trying to say don't ever post any stories. All I'm saying is always focus on what matters most, your videos. Or photo post, I guess. Photo post still do better than most people think they do. Anyway, And since we're here, let's do one more bonus tip. Make something out of the ordinary. I think in an era of so much saturation and so much content out there, it's so important to differentiate yourself and make yourself stand out from the rest of the crowd. That's becoming more and more difficult to do as time progresses. So really think about ways that you can step outside of the box and do something that no one's done before. Because if you really want someone to stop scrolling and watch your video through all the way, then the best thing you can do is show them something that they've never seen before. Keep that in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, make sure to check out my online course, Vertical Video Pro, in the description box below. This is the biggest sale we're and one of the only sales we've done all year long. So make sure you do not miss it. Most people still think it's too late to do the whole content creation thing, but that couldn't be further from the truth. There has never been a better time to post and grow a following in a community online. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check out the course. It's specifically made for you. Everything I've learned in the last decade of making content all in one little course. I mean, it's, it's not a little course, it's definitely, you know, it's not as big as like a masterclass. It's a digestible size. It's not bite size. It's not family size. It's just like the perfect serving size. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Uh -huh.